for sheep this time. Usually Alta is a little bit less mean with these spawns. And it's spawning in on the right side of the map. It is going to be Wamo one Now with a 2-0 here. Leading two games after taking one of the swiftest victories I've ever seen. On the left side, it is going to be the Muslim with the Chinese in blue. Mongols, a civilization that emerged in popularity very recently on this map. How do you feel about this civilization matchup over here? I think it is a little bit RNG based, but the cool thing is actually with the recent tweaks towards spawns, it became less RNG. So the issue you used to have as the Mongols is that you were flipping a coin on whether your gold and stone were close enough to your woodline. Well, one cool thing that Mongol players started to realize is the map gods, by adding in all these little cluster trees, they started to push the gold veins and the stone away from the center. Look around Wham's base right now. Gold right next to a tree line, second gold line next to a tree line, and then double stone ahead of him. Like, everything is really nice for him right now. So this means that you can actually pick the Mongols and feel less gambly about your starts than you used to. And there you go, like right next to him, Uvu, and then just around the corner, a gold vein afterwards. Whereas you remember the early days, right? A Mongol would pick this map, they'd go over to the tree line, and then if you look at the back behind Wham's base, you can see where his gold was meant to be. Nowhere near where his TC would be. Yeah, and the thing is that when you are sort of spawning or at least starting closer to your opponent, like we're seeing right now, you also close the distance between yourself and the enemy base when it comes to tower rushing. So it is much easier for you to pull off such a level of tower rush. And I'm actually curious to see if Vem is going to do that, especially because this is a civilization matchup that we have seen the Muslim play on what was Lipani last week against the Mista. In that matchup, Mista made one of the most atrocious tower rushes I've ever seen. We have seen tons of towers. The Muslim was barely able to access resources. I'm curious to see how Mista, or um, how the Muslim's response here is going to change to tower rushes based on what he has seen last week. Because last week, yeah. he essentially tried to rush a barbie camp, but it was just a little too late and ultimately got suffocated by the towers. Let's see how he responds to this tower rush right now, whether we are going to see a preemptive tower on the mill or not. This is actually probably my favorite matchup right now, Lytical. And it's because of what you just mentioned with outpost rushes. Both of these civs can actually outpost rush quite effectively. And I, like, you know, before anyone says, oh, KP loves outpost rush. No, no, no. I'm accepting it. I'm embracing it, okay? Like, you know, I'm willing to admit that outposts can be everywhere. So you might as well have a game where both civs are fairly evenly matched in their ability to do it. And I think that's what you get here. But the Muslim doesn't tend to do much this outpost rushing. Similar to last weekend, he's going to find himself defending against it. And the response this time around is going to be a Dark Age barracks over here for the Muslim. Remember, he can easily match the Spearman numbers of the Delhi player, or the Mongol player rather, over here with the supervising ability of the Imperial officer. But there is a problem with that. First of all, you're going to forfeit supervising the mill. But more importantly, you pay full price for your spearman as opposed to Vamp paying half price. Well, there's a bigger problem right now. Where is Benny Boy's second gold line? Uh, uh -huh. Go south. To the south. The outpost in the way. Uh oh yep. Both gold mines. Oh, this is oh. actually more than concerning. Well, he, he needs tax, to live off from that. That only gets you so far. Yeah, yeah, and you don't want to be taxing at this. Like that's going to slow you down so much if you're already going to spearman trying to defend. I, I struggle to see how you're easily going to break out of this. Oh, if this is a disaster! And blocks wait, the wait a second. He's got a second imperial officer, so he can tax and supervise at the same time. But you see, he's trained on gold, and I mean, he has no response to those tower rushes right now. He can't even afford to supervise the barracks because if he does that, he won't really be gathering tax. And behind this one. Vam is going to beat him to Feudal Age, and the reason why this is massive is because once the Mongol player reaches Feudal Age, he's going to have arrow slits. Ideally, you want to start cleaning up those towers before the Mongol player reaches Feudal. When the Mongol player tower rushes you, you should never be the one that falls behind in Feudal Age timing. This is looking really grim for the Muslim, I'm not gonna lie. Now, now, in fairness to Ben, he did at least get his Donner Kebab this time, right? So he's, he hasn't GG'd out just yet, but like... Does he have certain pivot points? Like, what was that last game? It was like four or five minutes, GG, if you don't have sheep. Is it like six or seven minutes if you don't have gold? What we'll to find out. I think one of, the, one of the most annoying things from about this Lytical is like, usually you want to be able to get the Barbican to stick like a stop sign up. No more outposts coming from the Mongol. 
But because you're heavily delayed in getting that gold together, right now getting 40 gold a minute, it means that Barbican is going to be heavily delayed. In fact, he wouldn't even be able to afford it right now because of the amount of spam in these building. Yeah, he's going to have a decent amount of spearmen out here. The problem is that Vam, he sees the barracks. He even sees the spearmen popping out thanks to those towers. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Vam dropping an archer range the moment he reaches Feudal Age here. And there's going to be absolutely no response from the Muslim to those uh, archers because he is still hard stuck in Dark Age. And as you see, congratulations, now you have the gold. But how much food is the Muslim exactly possessing? And... Uh, this this experiment won't be enough against the tower. That, that's the problem yep. here. I don't think this is enough to deal with the towers, and you forfeit your fuel age timing because of this. But he has sheep this time, Lydical. He has <laughs> sheep. That, that's the important... <laughs> he can't GG out quickly either, because if he does, he's out. Right now, Wham is on match point, and he's really turning the screws. More spearmen arriving in the front line. One outpost to be burnt down, but behind this, the second one. And remember, the tech up almost complete for Wham. Soon he'll be into Aris Litz. And look at the damage already done to Spears. He's going to come out. He's going to be outmassed here. Four versus eight. So we'll back away, losing one in the process. Make that two because one of them seems to be drunk. But he can actually just bait him here. He can start to poke and stab at the back of him. And you can't commit with the torches. Yeah, that's exactly that it. And remember, those are full price spearmen that the Muslim are using. Whereas he on the other go. side, the other side, Vam is playing half price. Away. <laughs> he just ran away. Like he ran around him, Lydical. He's like, oh, you're not looking. Gets in the tower. And now the villagers have to join in as well. All right, here we go. Outpost rush, electric boogaloo edition. At least this time we were able to push him away, but damage heavily done here. The Muslim stunted and slowed down. Wham behind by two villages, but definitely not behind in economy, in raw economy. Yeah, it looks like the towers are finally getting cleaned up, although new towers being built. Finally, Barbican is coming online, but as weird as it sounds like, if Wham just went full Spearman here, he might even be able to stop that landmark. It's gotta be a little too late over there. Villager gets the tower up though, and that's what matters. I think the villager may have even survived, and Hardened Spearman, as an upgrade, is now coming in. The Muslim may have lived to see another day, Wait. but is he? Wait a second. Yeah, he, he, Barbican is not complete yet. Speed. He's got the build speed. Yeah. He, you can't kill him quick enough, even with Hardened Spearman. You kill like one villager max, so you just have to back away. So it looks like the Muslim will get his gold, but let's keep in mind that this Barbican is on the south side of the goal. Are you following where I'm He's going? He's chopping through. Goal? He's not going oh for the wood. Oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> Salami is going to be more room? than happy with this. There is an interesting story about this one. Uh, that is the fact that, you know, when Viper said that, uh, you know, he's going to be focusing on AoE 2 for most of the time, he also said, oh yeah, he's just going to learn one build from Salami and he's going to do that. This is what Salami suggested him. Do this. When you tower rush, chop into the forest, chop down all the trees, because this way you establish line of sight and you can drop an outpost in there in the middle of the forest impossible to even surround with villagers and now you're going for the wood not the gold you're just suffocating the muslim here with towers and he's chopped through whoopsie surprise waiting for him he should have finished the outpost instead so we'll have to back away the muslim will hold on for the moment but he cannot access much of this wood because if the khan is here the falcon will give vision he needs to move the north side and this is what i was trying to highlight before have a look at that gold vein right now and have a look where the barbican is and notice where this wood line is if Wab yep. goes in with an outpost on this wood, he blocks out both of those resources. And the thing is that the Muslim has nothing to stop that with. He has three spearmen, but look at what Wham did. He doubled down on the spearmen. He's up to 10. That's enough to potentially even consider diving underneath that barbican and just hitting that gold straight away. Looks like both players are now thinking about Castlage, but obviously Wham being completely untouched back at home, he's gonna be well set up for that. And now the spearmen, they are moving in for a potential kill on those lumberjacks because, as you said, it's it might not even be about the gold mine. It is going to be about the woodland or you chop through. It's going to be a chop through here, I think. Yep. And this is not the lumberjack fantasy he was thinking when he went on the wood here. Trying to build up defensive outposts to block any assault in this area. But this many spearmen, he might even just start torching through buildings at this rate. Looks like Wan is going to stop at 10, though. So we'll just aggress for the moment. But he's figured about Castle, he's dreaming about it. And I gotta say, like, you're Mongol versus Chinese. You're one TC versus one TC. No Song Dynasty. Castle yes. on Castle, I give a clear advantage over to the Mongols. And how about Song Dynasty versus Castle? Because that's what we are having right now. Ooh. Song Dynasty coming in here with Wham, um, with that Imperial Academy being dropped by the Muslim. But Wham is going straight to Castle, and you get the feeling that Mongols' Castle feels a little bit more valuable than Song Dynasty in this game right now. 
Absolutely, because then you get Lancers, then you begin the dive in. And what does Song Dynasty get you? Well, the Spearmen, they don't exist anymore. You can all rebuild them anyway. The only new unit you get access to is Juge Nu. Juge Nu, they're not exactly very effective against heavily armored units, unless your goal is to have them role play as hedgehogs, because with the amount of arrows it will take to kill anything heavily armored, they will indeed look like a little Sonic. Or potentially just get massacred by Manganos, because that's always an option here for the Mongo player. Castle Age on the way for Wham, and this is where the Mongols really start to unlock their power. Step Red Elf is going to come in, you're going to start picking up relics, potentially consider a second town center, improved siege engineering, all these key factors now coming into play for the Mongols, and the Muslim struggling to stabilize over here right now. All right, they stopped that extra outpost going down with the loudest death cry I've ever heard from a Mongol villager. So he will at least keep his wood for now. But remember that falcon, that falcon that can give vision. And when it does, that outpost will start peppering more villages. And remember that dualisms are still squishy. I don't think he has the resources to go for textiles to slow down for it at all, which is going to just put him as an easy, squishy target for these new outposts. I'm just now noticing something also pretty important, I think. The stone mines. Because you mentioned Song Dynasty, but that's just one part of the equation for the Chinese. They want to play yeah. multi-town centers in most cases. There is one yeah. stone mine that's clearly exposed. Where's the second stone mine at? Is that even accessible? Or two TC plays just uh, completely inaccessible for the Muslim? I think it's going to remain inaccessible because look on the backside, actually. It looks like Wan was planning Ooh, to put one. an outpost down back there also. Okay, so he's got stone back here. But I didn't like this idea any anyway. I didn't like the idea of TC booming here. Like, you're nah, too he, far behind. He, he would just get overrun. Exactly. Like, it's a heavier burden. You have limited food as it is. You've got deer that are about to be exposed to outpost spam. Not to mention the lancers already have justification of right in there. Because not only is there a wood line, there's a potential food line there as well. And you will have issues with the food at one point. Because you're running out of sheep, you're running out of berries. And you just have no backup food source. And keep in mind that with improved siege engineering, you can get some traction trebuchets out here quite easily. And if you think about that, that barbican for now is holding. But how long will it hold against trebuchets? It was a stable. I wonder what... I thought it was an outpost in this area. It's actually snuck a stable over here. I think he packed it up and went all the way over. He gets the bad news that the walls have gone up, so he's going to march to the center instead. So a cute play that doesn't pay off for Wham. His intent was to wrap them around the back, but as expected, the Muslim did pick up walls there. Now Wham. Oh, uh, so much work for nothing, right? Mm. Uh, oh, whoops. Whoops. Yep. Uh, this is it's, getting it's more and more right concerning now, for the Muslim. And he's stuck in feudal. Because now he's going to be just stuck oh, with God, the food the eco. Oh, the, the officer is also coming in. Oh, this is so painful for the Muslim. Well, he's he just official, losing so right? much. He's officially dead. And now the villagers, they're going to try to run away, but they're in trouble as well. They could garrison in the village and realize it finally, but now there's a huge gap in your defense plan. Nice walls you have, but what about the uh, what about the gap in the tree line? Isn't that going to be a little bit of a concern? It's going to be a concern, but I feel like there are more concerns out there for the Muslim. It's just one of the many concerns that he has to have in this game. He's getting tower rush now. Spring Olden placements are in there, and we talked about this. He's kind of stuck in feudal age right now just has insufficient food to get up to castle age and by the time he gets to castle he's really facing the wrath of the mongols because behind this one Vam yep. is going to start picking up the relics he's adding more and more man at arms lancers at least getting picked off over here is nice for the muslim but you get the impression that Vam is just one if not two steps ahead already if i'm the muslim i'm praying for a tree to fall in the forest somewhere near Vam right now because that feels like the type of divine intervention you need. It feels almost impossible to recover from this stage, like especially when you go for two TCs. If we try to like think of a way you can get back in, he has very limited space. He needs to set up farms in the coming minutes as the food's gonna dry up, but that means he needs wood. So the best opportunity that I think the Muslim has is if he can sneak out onto the west side for reserve wood lines, because he's gonna be pressured off of this one in the coming minutes. If he's able to offset the aggression of Wham for five, six minutes, and Wham doesn't commit to a dive force, there is a way back into this game. But make no mistake about it, folks. This is like a 92% win probability in favor of Wan. You're being suspiciously precise with that number, 92. But I gotta agree, at least with the approximate out there. Because, as you said, the Muslim needs to find a way to just buffer this up. But the problem is that he's being suffocated by towers from every single direction now. Not just his wood lines, but look at that. Vam is limiting his expansion to the north with the towers. Um, he's going to limit his expansion to the south with the towers. And you also have that stable in the south as well. So even if the Muslim takes down that tower somehow, 
even if there is an expansion that way, there's always going to be a production building that can be used to just trickle a couple of knights in there and harass it. Looks like this girl is going to be suspiciously inactive here. Villagers might have to take the long Oops. way back home, but such inefficiencies are kind of acceptable for Wham right now, given how good his position is. So the, the process that Wham's following here, like it looks like he's not trying to end the game, but like he's doing it in an attritional way. The Muslim can't can't actually stuff this much longer. Like, as he grows his eco very quickly, he needs to move out. You can set up farms to delay it, but once again, that's wood. He doesn't have access to much wood right now. Gold is also a problem. Stone, yeah, he has enough for like maybe one keep drop, and that might be a way of breaking out. But before he can break out, he needs to deal with these outposts. Outposts that are now upgraded with Springholds, so the spearmen that he only has right now aren't going to be good enough to break out. And you see he's running out of wood now because finally those towers are providing line of sight even without the falcons. You have an arrow tower over there, but the big deal is the springle tower. Not even tech stalls on those villagers, but even if you had them, it's not like they will survive for long against springle towers. Looks like finally the spearman pool is coming out against those towers, but Vam is aware of this. And Vam will respond in kind. He's going to be completely aware of the fact that yeah, the Muslim needs that forest. So Vam, yeah, but he's going to commit everything to deny that. Here's a cool thing, Lidical. The Muslim actually used the limit golden wood he had to get a trebuchet, so he's actually going to be able to break out. And this is starting to bring nice. that win probably back a bit. Like, wham, he's he's taking this opportunity to, like, somewhat budget his defense force outside his opponent's base so that he can get greed. He's playing for the relics right now, a play we know Wham likes to do. I will say that, like, I kind of expected this. Wham isn't a player to end the game. There are some players that would double down on this and go for the jugular. But Wham is more calculated in his approach. He's more methodical, not a BC level, but he's willing to play into that 30, 40 minute game. And that's a pretty ballsy thing to choose to do up against a civ like the Chinese, because even though you've crippled them, you haven't killed them. Indeed, and keep in mind that Vam had a little, little bit of a pedestrian pace when it comes to picking up those relics. He is still just possessing two, and the third one is just now coming in. And look at what the Muslim is doing behind this one. He's mining stone. And if you take a look at Vam's army, well, it's better than nothing. It's not necessarily a spectacular force. If the Muslim can play this one heavy with the spears and nest of bees, he might be able to secure himself some momentum, and he could turn that into a keep drop. Sure enough, you can pack up your base with the Mongols, but you've mentioned this numerous times in the recent weeks that when you are playing the Mongols, oftentimes your entire food eco is concentrated around your town center, so packing it up is not as easy as it sounds like. Yeah, even if you get the sheep to follow you, unless your Khan's alive, which, judging by most Mongols so far this weekend, is never alive, you're not going to be able to move them way quick, but wham! Not looking to allow it to come to that. Although he gives over some ground, look what he's been prepping. He was stacking up the crossbows and now the siege as well. He's coming for the Muslim. And the Muslim, while he has got some siege, he has limited gold and wood. And look what siege he's built. No spring ults, only nest bees. So he could lose them very quickly because Wham is prepping the anti-siege alongside the anti-building siege force. Indeed, and once the action trebuchet has come into play, you can start shelling that barbican and keep in mind that the Muslim needs that Barbican to protect the gold mine. Once again, the focus could shift away from wood control to gold control. Essentially how the game started here. And Vam is playing a really good resource denial game over here. He always finds a way keep, to deny a key keep. resource from the opponent. Trips. Oh, it could be Trips. taken down. It's gonna fall! Oh. It's gonna fall! Oh my god, it's so close! Now crossbows move in though. He has to cancel and move away. Heavy oh. loss of stone in the process, but at least he gets some of it back. Some of it, but not quite enough. He lost just enough stone to prevent him from dropping another keep, and that's a tremendous that amount of momentum it. lost. And that was the last of it as well, Lidical. That was his reserve stone. He has to play on the offensive. The one fort of his Barbican is his next option. The only other way he can now get the stone required for this is if he purchases it, which is why he's hard on the gold. But think about that. That Barbican is slowly going down and your gold will soon disappear as well. The Muslim, he's struggling for resources big time in this one. And look at that. Vam is just stripping the map barren of resources. He knows very well that the Muslim needs every single bit of resource he can grab. So Vam is just going to yoink those gold mines away while he still can. And it fuels what he's doing here. He's stacking up the siege. I'll give credit to the Muslim. I actually love this play in the siege workshop. A lot of players wouldn't do this on limited wood, but he realizes the need for spring walls. The problem is he's still outmassed. He has a fixed production time of these spring walls. Mongols, as long as they've got plenty of infantry, can stack up as many as they can afford, which is why Wham still has a scroll advantage and is now pushing it to the limit. As he dives in, 
Villagers committed to the repair. Plenty of them being sacrificed in the process. And Spreel's getting ready to target out the Nest of Beast. One goes down. Spread shot coming out, but barely any damage done here. A nice rule back. Wham being inefficient. Willing to sacrifice a few crossbows, but not willing to give away those Spearmills as they rotate in once again. Now target now. Second Nest of Beast down. Crossbows stand their ground. Spearman not able to hold. Frontline about to bolt. And the trades always go in the way of Wham. Demusum in serious trouble now. It's quality over quantity over here. The Muslim, he has the better Sprangles with the Clock Tower on them, but it's the numbers game that Wham is playing. 55 army against just 19. That Barbican is still standing strong, but behind that, there is just a non-existent army for the Muslim. Three Spearmen, one Trebuchet and four Clock Tower Sprangles separate him from defeat, and he is now facing 30 plus Crossbowmen. More and more Sprangles appearing on the battlefield as well for Wham. And the Muslim is running out of resources. Look at that gold mine. It's gone. The forest is gone. No more resources accessible for the Muslim in the next one or two minutes, unless he breaks out of his base, but that seems almost impossible with the army that he's facing right now. Yep, no way to go to the south side, no way to move to the north side, not much to do up there. Instead, plenty more villages dying as he tries to get on the stone. The Muslim, he didn't even get enough. That was his clutch play, that was his opportunity, the only opportunity. And despite all the investment in Springles, look at the count, he's still behind. Wham, looking to keep up the pressure, and now the Muslim playing with fire and a lot of fire coming his way. Range fire, bolts, sprinkled shots, even rocks falling from the sky that could obliterate the villager lead that he's worked so hard to build up. Indeed, he has that villager lead, but that's the only thing that he really has on the battlefield. Minimal army out there to protect those villagers with towers are coming up, but Wham is diving. Wham knows really well that the Muslim needs that gold mine. He sees that every single villager that the Muslim has essentially is working on that gold mine, and Wham is going to dive. Yep, he's just going to commit now. He can kill so many off here. Spiral trade's going out. We'll favor Demuslim as he has the clock towers here, but several more villagers going down as he backs away. But look at the bigger issue for Demuslim. It's not even gold. It's wood. He wasn't extracting on the tree line tool, which means that he's falling behind in the production. He's not able to field a bigger military force because Spearman and Nesta Bees both require wood. So does the repair of the Barbican over here, which is still being trapped down, and it's now on fire. If that Barbican goes down, suddenly your buffer goes away. Those crossbows can commit deep into your base. Barbican still standing strong over here. Even a forward siege workshop has been added by Wham. But the Muslim is just a returning issue that he simply can't access resources. Now he's back on wood, but his gold access is oh going God. to disappear. The Sprinkles are sniping out the villages as well. They go up the Nest of Bees. That's a freebie. Does get a trade out on a tread, but better trade getting rid of the Nest of Bees as it poses a bigger threat right now. Now keep going up. Maybe getting rid of the Trebs could be the saving grace for the Muslim, but see, Wham is on the march now. Moving in with the Yam, moving speed with the crossbows, able to gap close here, one Nest of Bees to try and counter him out, but he's committing. He needs to stop this from going up. We'll target on the Nest of Bees. Repairs coming out, but not quick enough. And the villagers may be in trouble here. He'll sidestep towards them. Keep will be complete, but the Muslim taking a heavy hit once again in the eco department and in the defense force. And keep in mind, you will have to repair that keep because it's being non-stop trapped down. You might actually find an angle in the scrabbishes right now with the Springles, but you will have to keep repairing that keep and look at the Muslim. He's out of wood. Insufficient wood is gonna become a reality, and even if he can keep that alive a little longer, his forest is running dry. Soon he won't be able to access wood to keep that keep up with, and that could easily snowball out of control. Springles now moving up here trying to snipe the trebuchets. No Springles to be found over here by Wham, and it looks like he's calling off his no, forces for now because he's going into Imperial. He's also playing towards Sacred Sites. He realizes the Muslim's desperate. He needs to move out for resources, which means he can't rush out for Sacred Site control. So he can begin to turn the screws in conjunction with this imp up, and he definitely has the resources to get there. Not just on the food. Look at the gold department. His food is going to boom up to a reasonable degree. And off the back of this, what is the main thing you have to push out? Like, gold is usually one of the biggest strenuous factors for all your upgrades in Imperial. He has plenty in reserve due to the fact that he has five relics. And guess what that gold will be handy for when you reach Imperial? Tithe Barns. Tithe Barns that is going to boost your economy, most notably here. Yeah, and of course, all the elite upgrades as well, all of those upgrades being just very, very gold heavy. Notably, not only does he have five relics, he also has now three sacred sites. So suddenly he puts the Muslim on a timer and we have reached Imperial. This is the domain where the Mongols can start thinking about all their bombard towers. And we could even see Wham just playing defensive over here saying, okay, you are sitting inside your base, you have defensive keeps. I will just sit outside your base, wait for you to come out. Oh. 
Oh, this is a big deal, actually. Look at Wham Stone. He's got enough to improve shot triggers. These trades are going to become one-sided. Demurzum, yeah, you've got tankier Springles, but you won't have the range to attack here. And you can see that Wham is stacking up a new line of Springles behind this. So trades are going to get one-sided very quickly in the coming minute or two. Demurzum needs to gain more ground fast if he wants to stand a chance of recovering this. Even if it's not the improved version of Shutter Triggers, the basic vanilla upgrade is sufficient by itself. Yep. But also Bombards. I'm just not noticing, you know, Bombards is now a reality for and Vam it's, here. it's the improved one. It's the improved one coming out. So free tower range advantage over his opponent. Tide Barn's almost complete on top of that. And as you highlight, he can go for Bombards, but he doesn't need Bombards. The Trebs are doing enough work. In fact, in some ways, it's better to let the Muslim idle eco and waste wood repair him because it's been draining him for so much of this game. That's totally true. You could just drain him dry. And this is where the stable and these towers will come online. You see, the tower is going to get burned down, but Vam is getting whoops. a notification and he has something in queue already. That proxy stable <laughs> actually paying off. <laughs> He's queued up now. Lances are revealed to Muslim. What do you do now? He's going for the walls. He didn't know us. Uh oh. Why would you ever notice? Like, just think about it. Like, what's Why would your you ever incentive? Yeah, like, what's your incentive to check a random stealth forest on the left flank for a random forward stable? He's actually walling himself off to the south with stone walls, never expecting that stable to be behind him. Villager, the villager even stuck in as well. This is about to turn into one of those horror movies where people hide out in a lodge, they barricade themselves in, <laughs> they wall up every entry, and then all of a sudden they turn the lights on and behind them, there he is, Jason with the chainsaw. And he might not even notice the villagers being slain because you would never look there. Looks like he now keep. notices it drops a keep. But still, many villagers will be slain. And while he's looking there, he's getting pushed back in the middle. Now with the Imperial Age Springholds as well on the battlefield for Vam. I feel oh like God, Vam is getting ready for the final blow. <laughs> no! This, this extension is going to be grim. He needs gold. All the stone down here is great. So at least he can refund the keep. But the north side is the problem because look... These outposts, I believe they did have Springles. They were shooting one down. One of them is having Springles. The other two is completely unarmed. At least he'll go after the correct one first of all. But Wham now knows yep. about this. He can actually send a, a few Lancers or Horsemen up there as he builds them out. But right now, Wham is just looking to go in because the Muslim is looking to reach up. Crossbows. Be careful, the SMB's damage Whoa. coming up. It's red. That's so ugly. This is a decent amount of them, though. Into the sure coming away. in, though. This could be the perfect timing for Wham. If you can nail that timing when the Muslim reaches Imperial, you could easily snowball the game because he won't have the upgrades yet. And now the Barbican is gone. You have trebuchets, you have bombards. This is where you dive deep. The moment you see that Spirit Way finish, the moment Vam gets the notification that the Muslim is up to Imperial, he has to go He's and he down. likely will go. And here we go. He can start to plow in. Barbican just went down. The Bombard makes this a fast siege now. It's no longer relying on trebs that take a million years. Keep has to be cancelled. The Muslim. Wait, no! He lost he it! He lost the keep! He lost the keep, the he doesn't have the stone! Quick. And now he has to back up further. Outposts are gonna start falling. Even the shamans are here. They're partying right now. They're saying, woo! Wham is gonna be in with a shot at his ticket to Wallalo. And the Muslim is looking like he might be out. That's the beast. Oh, beautiful wall is coming out. He just dives in. And Cineriaris is enough to pick them apart. And now the village is all picked as well. The Muslim has to pull everyone to the front line. Conscription underway. Give him a torch. Give him a hat. Send them to war, but they won't come home. And a body block is coming in here. The through. Muslim taps out. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. What a way to close this out. Game two. The Muslim had no opportunity to fight back. Game three. Wham made damn well sure he had nowhere coming out. And he will make it a quick 3-0 to make his way through to day number two of the monthly. Now in and are just one series away with being able to qualify to the Wallalo event later this year. And his opponent, only one person standing in his way. The one, the only, the mister. When such a clinic today by Wham, 6 and 0, 3 0 in Kazva, 3 0 in the Muslim over here, unbeaten in this weekend. We'll have to see how he does against the Mista tomorrow. But today was a clinic from Wham. Every single game he played was a, just a spectacular one. And this one as well, the relentlessness with this aggression was just so, so well executed. The resource denial game, the Muslim's reactions were clean. It's just the fact that Wham was just relentless really that's the best word to put this with mm -hmm. and wham can we cruises onto a 3-0 win with this
So I'm just going to have to do some research off this stream because I'm wondering, like, does Canada put something special on their water supply? Because that's both Canadians not dropping a single game so today. Poppy Paul free owed Eric. He free owed Zerton. Wham! Free owed Kazva, and he just free owed Demosman as well. 